So I'm going to talk to you for a minute about E.J. Gold. John Lilly introduced E.J. to Lee and I, and when we moved to Grass Valley, he became a friend and neighbor. He has had numerous of our tanks at different times over the years. He is an American artist, author, musician, and spiritual teacher. EJ's large-scale jazz art paintings have served as backdrops for Herbie Hancock, Winston, Winton Marsalis, Nancy Wilson, Oscar Peterson, and Jazz at Lincoln Center. He has written and self-published over 50 books, including the American Book of the Dead. He is the founder of the Institute for the Development of the Harmonious Human Being. He has for many years acted as an independent spiritual teacher whose work and style bear a strong affinity with the teachings of Gurdjieff and the Fourth Way School of Thought. Like Gurdjieff, the fundamental emphasis of Gold's teaching is on the concept of spiritual work in daily life and a constant effort to increase and maintain heightened awareness in all activities. He is also a hilarious stand-up comic. He was invited to present at this conference by Float On. He does not travel and was asked to send a digital recording. He invited us over to find out about the conference and the following is what happened. <laughs> um, so I kind of let that thing, you know, lie there like that. So I'll tell you a story about about John that I thought was very funny. He come first of all, he uh, he called because he was very excited uh, that you guys had come up with something that didn't drip, just didn't drip ever. This is after the Japanese that Japanese bizarre disaster tank. Yeah. It's oh, like, yeah. It was a fiberglass. Yeah. Samadhi yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. Total disaster tank. But right after that, you guys built one that was fabulous. And that's the one that I experienced. And the, 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 uh, the, the uh, UFO was behind that. At that time. <laughs> the best part of it was that it didn't impinge upon my body. It didn't remind me that whether, whether gently or violently, it did not remind me that I had a body and that it was there in this tank and so on. The faster, to me, the faster the tank gets out of the way, the better the tank is. And that's exactly why I actually started with and kept with the Samadhi tank, in spite of the fact that I knew you guys as well as I did. This gets the body out of the way like 20 years of meditation would do. But here, you get into the tank, and nothing like that is, nothing bad is going to happen to you in the tank, first of all. That's a very good thing to know. Nothing bad will happen to you in the tank. No, I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, it's dark, it's, <laughs> you know, no. the temperature wasn't right for me. I like a nice warm bath. It was cool. I got used to that. It was okay. And then I was waiting for the drips, and they weren't happening because this new tank that they had developed was this mind-boggling thing that was just driving me crazy to wait for the drip and nothing. <laughs> and so... You can't be satisfied. No, it's true. <laughs> I saw it as an, as an escape velocity. I saw it as a way of getting out off the planet very easily because it does two things, two wonderful things. One is it isolates you from the environment and gives you a safe environment within that. It's a bubble. It's a great bubble, a safety bubble. And secondly, most importantly, is it takes gravity off. It takes those six miles, that six mile high column of air off of you momentarily and gives you freedom from gravity. Not complete freedom, but certainly a lot of freedom from gravity. Enough 
that it can set you into orbit almost immediately. And as you get acclimatized to the tank, you know this, but the folks maybe won't necessarily know this, it takes a while to get acclimatized to the tank. Duh, you start out working in a gymnasium, you don't get results the first day. Come on, don't be a nut. You are not going to get results the first 20 seconds of doing anything. So you get used to the tank, acclimatized to the tank, you start bonding. This is a joke? No. You start bonding. I work with bonding all the time. I work with bonding with animals all the time. I work with bonding with uh, feng shui spaces all the time. I work with fountains all the time. Bonding is an issue. Always is. Whether you know it or not, you're getting into a relationship which is going to last years, maybe your whole lifetime. That can be a plant that you brought into your house, but it's certainly going to be something you get so intimate with that you get inside it for hours at a time in order to be able to reveal to yourself your innermost, well, we'll get to that in a second, right? This is where I went with it. A lot of people use this just to chill. This is very cool, and chilling is good. They also use the things for relief of chronic ailments and illnesses and pains and aches and miseries and so forth, and that's also very, very good. You just zero out the body by getting into the tank and acclimatizing yourself to it. Learning how to do that takes a few times, right? Yes. An individual can get into a tank and eliminate 20 years of learning how to zero out the body. I'm in the tank right now. Are you? Oh, <laughs> yes. And in the tank, I am the tank. I am one with the tank. And you only learn that by actually experiencing getting into the tank, having it happen. You go, ooh, hey, that was kind of fun, uh, sort of. <laughs> I've had, you know, uh, funner times than that, but this is very enlightening, <laughs> to say the least. And eventually you will be enlightened. In other words, it, the, part of the process of enlightenment is to get lighter. No? Yeah. Seriously. I mean, that's seriously true. <clears throat> and to, to uh, relieve oneself of the burden of the body and the burden of the mind. No faster way to do that. Now, in the tank, one thing that can happen in the tank, this is what I was going to tell you happened. Um, one of the guys who was uh, doing a tank, a tank trip on the previous day and gotten out of the tank and then showered. You had to shower afterward and get the salt off. Right. Still have to do that, right? Yes. Yes, that hasn't changed. So the technology is really pretty much the same. Yes, you get in the tank. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and you perfect small things rather than big things. You perfect small things, and to, so everything works and stays working. You don't throw one thing out of because you, you can do that with improvements. You can throw other things out of whack with an improvement, as engineers know. So. Um, one of the things I found very, very useful with the tank, amazingly and, and immensely useful, was I could take a group of people, we had six tanks at one time set up, and I could take a group of people and say, look, get in the tank, first of all, get acclimatized to it. After the fifth session in the tank, just acclimatizing, doing nothing, just lying there, just enjoying the tank, get out, don't do anything, don't try to do anything, just get in the tank, enjoy. Okay, get out of the tank. Don't ask questions, don't nothing, don't try to reason it out, don't try to rationalize anything, just don't try to explain anything, just get in the tank, enjoy, enjoy for one hour, get out. Now you go shower. So that, this guy was doing, he was showering. He got out, he showered, he drove home, hit a beautiful Maserati, I think you know who I'm talking about. Hit a beautiful Maserati, and he drove this bomb home, and um, he woke up in the tank. <laughs> he did this how many? Three times? Is it? Do you know the story? It's three times, right? That this she happened. Did it too. And you did it too. Yeah. I, not in a Maserati, though. No, but you did the same thing. <laughs> and the first time that I tried this, I, I didn't. But the, I, uh, on my fifth uh, tank experience, I did experience that double looping. And what happens, uh, you get a time loop out of the thing. And you start projecting a full blown tactile hallucination. Similar to the way that the Earth is produced, or the way the universe is produced, it's a full-blown tactile hallucination, 
two, when you're meditating uh, in that space, it becomes an amazing tool. And that's what I, I find is a transformational tool. It's just unsurpassed. There's nothing like it on this planet. There's a very, very high level, and this I agree with, a very high level of selfness that creates what one is, that is the character builder, that builds your character, that makes your character do what your character does, and sets your character up, basically, chooses, selects the character's mm, traits, or what they call in England, traits, traits. Um, and those that goes very well with the Buddhist uh, uh, concept that you are your tendencies are you that your tendencies the things that you are likely to do you're likely to do again. One of the things that I am hoping that somebody will do is combine some of my uh, inductions, uh, like the relaxation induction, things like that with the tank and see what happens, what people, how people respond to that. I think that would be very exciting. Because um, I think that being led through a series of inducted journeys um, would help people. Also, there's, there are journeys, there are extra dimensional journeys as well that I've set up, and I think that would go well with the tank. Although I don't know anybody who's experimenting with that at this time. It's just started. I've just released those things, so <laughs> it's only been weeks. So we haven't had any, any uh, feedback on it. But that would be kind of a, a fun thing to see if anybody can use those for that, that purpose, particularly to do metaprogramming. And there are, I do have uh, inductions that are metaprogramming inductions, of course. Okay. I have a good time with, with Adam's salts. Uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, magnesium sulfate that bothers me. No, <laughs> it's no, it's called not an true. in-joke. I actually, yeah, it's an in-joke. <laughs> it's not true. Magnesium sulfate doesn't bother me, nor does MGSO4. <laughs> that in case you guys are kind of a friend I had a friend he was this friend he is no more for what he thought was H2O was H2SO4 <laughs> lie in an Epsom salt bath for one hour you will feel great and then on top of that in a safe environment where you can completely relax completely let go that's the other thing too that I find very very good is that in that environment, because you build it as a safe environment, you can sit up quickly, get out of there fast, you have escape things and all kinds of panic things built in, which is fantastic. And many of the tanks did not ever put those panic things in, like you, the way you did, did the, to, to let somebody freak out, bleh, get out of there quickly. That's a relief, you know, you, so you feel safe because you know you can do that any time. And uh, in fact, Tony told me, she said, panic. When I was in there, she said, panic. I said, but I, she said, down, panic. Okay, okay, I'll panic. And I started groping around, and the thing came open really easily, and I popped out, I said, oh, no big deal. Hardly any weight to it, it's cheap. And I'm out of the tank. There, I said, all right, now get back in the tank again. Now panic again. And so I said, yeah, she did, did panic drill. And so then you feel completely safe in there. Once you've done three panic drills, you feel safe in there forever. No problem, because you know you can get out if you need to. One of the things I appreciated was the fact that it is a safe environment. It feels safe in there, and you can breathe in there. It's very important to be able to breathe. I love to breathe. I'm so addicted to oxygen, I cannot tell you. Happened to, the doctor that uh, birthed me was in on the conspiracy. He spanked me to get me to breathe this crap, and I haven't been able to stop since. Someday I'll... I'll beat it, but you know, until that That'll day. Be the last thing you do. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'll beat this oxygen addiction <laughs> if it's the last. I like that as a T-shirt. <laughs> so, um, the engineering is amazing. I, I've I've uh, I've watched Glenn as an engineer. I as a fellow engineer, um, I've watched him engineer and craft these things and come up with solutions. You don't have any idea what has to go into a tank in order to make the thing. You think, oh, you just put the stamp the things, put them together. Not true, right? It's a little more than that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more than that. How about a lot more? And everything has to be engineered down to a micron. It really does. And, and to make it work consistently forever 
without having to fly out there and fix it for you. Nobody wants to do that. Or have you ship it back, God forbid, and then you fix one nut and then you send it back out again. You know, but hey, you have to design so that that doesn't happen. So you don't have those things happen, or as few times as possible. And it's inevitably something will now and again. Um, what else do you, need? Do you like to know? One right one now? one thing I find is that I still have to uh, stretch my face to get really relaxed. It's to like, get, I, was, I thought it's, you better say to get it over the skull. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so it's most of the bugs I know have that same problem. <laughs> <laughs> but once I uh, do get it uh, all stretched, it's mm. like uh, I'm able to get more into the uh, being space. It uh, seems like I have to get out of the uh, personality. Yeah, well, that's why that. I, that's why I recommend the inductions <clears throat> because they they can help you guide you, lead you out of the I am me and into the I am all. You know, from that, that. But it's in stages. It's easy stages, and you can go as far as you want with it. And one of the things, you're in the forefront of something, you don't even know what it is yet, which is extra-dimensional XD technology. XDT is coming. Know it or not, like it or not, want it or not, it's coming. Because extra-dimensional is how you travel, actually how you travel in space. You don't travel by going from one thing in space to another. You travel by going outside and coming back in again. There are machines, devices that can be built to do just exactly that. They are in other civilizations. There are civilizations that are billions of years older than this civilization. Billions of years. And they still exist. They're still in existence. Anyway, yeah, the, that tank is a life changer. It's a wonderful experience. And the centers are doing a great deal to... Well, bring the word of God to the heathen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's as good as... Uh, oh, right, yeah. And, uh, don't forget, in the mind, there are no limits. <laughs> <laughs>